What's going on everybody? Jay Hayes here. So today I'm going to be doing sort of a review and I'm showcasing something that I have worked on for many, many months, many years for this to be created. By now, most people that have seen my reviews know that I'm probably one of the biggest assholes. I appear to be arrogant, a little bit harsh off the bat, but once you get to know me in person or even watching more of my reviews, you realize what kind of person I am. If you have watched my best drippers of all time, I'll post the link right there. Basically, I showed you all the drippers that are my favorite across the board, and one of the ones is the 454 Big Block. I have a bit of a relationship with the person that made the 454 Big Block, and I wanted to make it a bigger rendition as I thought the deck was a little outdated. It was kind of small. The post holes are really, really dainty. You can only kind of fit like 28 gauge in, but keep in mind back then that was all you had. You didn't have, well, I don't even want to say 28 gauge. I'm going to say 30 because you couldn't fit shit inside of there. Like pubic hair worth a coil is what you could work with. Anyway, so I was like, you know what? I want to make this bigger and better. And then we designed this. A lot of what you're about ready to see on this dripper is my creation. The airflow had to be unique to where it didn't leak. The way that the post is, I wanted to make it unique. The 454 was squonk compatible, but it was not really squonk. Like it had a pin, it just didn't function the way most squonks did. So I wanted to create something that was going to be different than everything else, literally. Now someone could say that the inspiration behind this is the 454 Big Block and I cannot disagree with that at all. There's no disagreement. I know someone might argue and say, well, the iGo W7 had a single post in the middle. They did, and they did come out before the 454 Big Block. However, they didn't have a grounding plate. They had screws. I'm not gonna sit here and try to justify the design as to what it is. I just know these are things that people are gonna mention if they are gonna try to find flaws with this or where the original baseline is. The baseline of this is what it is. There's a lot of revolutionary things on this dripper. Now I know people are going to ask, I'm not taking any proceeds of this tank whatsoever. The only proceeds that I'm going to get are the people that donate to my Patreon to make sure that they get this device. And it is considered a high end due to the limited qualities, where it's made, the way it's produced, how much it costs for it to be made. There's a lot of things that go into it as far as it being high end. I didn't want to make it too high end. That was ridiculous. I've seen drippers upwards of 300 bucks, 150. So I wanted to keep it on the lower end. It's also my way of giving back to you because if I raise the price to make a little bit of a profit, guess what? That takes more money out of your pocket. It's already at a price point where some people are a little abrasive towards it. Like, I can't justify spending $115. Listen, I can name about 50 other drippers off the top of my head that were that price tag that are high end. I could even name some that aren't even high end that are still that price tag. So it is what it is. If that's just me clearing that up because I know there's going to be a lot of people like, oh, it's 115 bucks. Listen, if you don't fucking want to buy it, don't buy it. There's there's gonna be a thousand made, and I'm gonna tell you right now, that thousand is gonna go a whole lot quicker than if I made 5,000. I know that seems like an obvious point, and it does. It's, of course, the thousand would go first over the 5,000, because that's 4,000 more. There are gonna be a wide plethora of reviewers that are getting this. Off the top of my head, I don't have the list in front of me, so I'm just gonna fire off the names. You got Todd's Reviews, you got Vaping Postman, Vaping Bogan, Mike Vapes, yeah, no one saw that one coming. Ambitions Vapor, Grim Green. I can't think of the other names off the top of my head, but there's a couple more. Basically, there's a nine of them, allotted nine that are going out to other reviewers. What they say about it is what they say about it. I'm already gonna announce all the things that are difficult with this, all of the problems that are with it, and then I'm gonna give you my rating. I know that seems awkward. I know it does. Even if you're going back many, many years ago, I kind of like recommended a product and sort of gave it a number. Well, this I have to give a numerical rating. I really do. I know it seems awkward. I do. It is what it is. It, it would only make sense for me to actually give this a numerical rating. A couple things with this 502 that you're going to notice that's not going to be on the final rendition. The prototypes that even their other reviewers get may have some of these flaws. When you get the produced version, 
version, it will not have any of the flaws that I will point out in this. Also, the drip tip that is on the top of there is not the drip tip that it comes with. I know one of the things a lot of people are asking is, how is this anti-clone? What's going to stop them from cloning this? First off, the center post houses a lot of different things inside of it. For it to function the way that it does, it has certain things in it that I don't really want to discuss because it's not really much of a reason to discuss. I will tell you this. A lot of the stuff that is on this dripper had to have handmade tools done for it. I'm not saying that China's not going to try to clone this because they will. Cloning that center post is going to prove to be very, very difficult extremely difficult. Keep in mind that the drip tip you are looking at right now is not the drip tip that is going to come with this actual dripper. I wanna show you the different peripherals that come inside of the jammy bag. I don't have the final packaging as of right now, so just keep in mind that what you see is basically what you're gonna get. It's just gonna be packaged in something entirely different. You're gonna have three different O-rings, and keep in mind those are all three different sizes a phillip set screw, an extra allen screw, which is for the top, whether you wanna use the Phillips or the Allen screw. Then you have two extra post screws and two different size Allen keys. Lots of different things going on here. And it's not to really make things difficult. It's just the way that this was made. Just wanted to make it as intricate and innovative as possible. So there are a couple things that are gonna be a lot different on this than what you would see in a typical dripper. The drip tip that it comes with is probably gonna be a Delrin concave drip tip. I don't really have anything like it. Top cap has one of the big bigger o-rings and you have a single airflow setting there my old trusty rusty uh oh all right so keep in mind when you do get this this part right here this ledge may be a little sharp it's nothing where you're going to cut your finger on but you'll definitely feel this right here it may be a little bit smoother by the time you get it you can see the machining on this is really really well done i really wanted to go above and beyond for the machining of this just to make it super super sexy tab here which is going to be utilized for your single airflow control i'll explain how that works in a second don't let that little tab fool you with these tabs how they're going to function this is your dual coil configuration and then this is your single as well as this so these two go hand in hand side by side airflow is going to come in through the ports right here on the top of the top cap and then just come out kind of at an angle so if you do purge this it should not go into your face it should go downward motion unless you got really big jammies then yeah you're probably gonna get it on your face this o-ring that is in here. This is probably gonna scratch the cap. The way that the O-ring works on the top cap is very, very fat and gooshy. Now, when you first put your drip tip in there, there's gonna be a little bit of a tolerance issue as it's gonna be a little tight. And what's gonna happen is after using it for so long, it's actually gonna get tighter on there just due to the actual dimensions of this O-ring. I'm not gonna pull the O-ring out just because I don't feel like pulling it out. Any scratches you do see on here is gonna be very, very superficial as that's probably for me trying to get the that drip tip off and on. So just keep that in mind with the drip tip. This is not a game. The way that this works is you have to kind of put it in evenly and even then, see there's a lot of resistance. See how it's not even going in? You definitely have to play a lot with this. And keep in mind that if you're gonna be pushing this in with, a, with the top cap in your hand, you're really gonna to wanna to make sure you don't cut yourself on this tab over here. The actual chimney itself, as you could tell, there is no airflow. And a lot of people were wondering how the airflow is gonna happen inside of this. Now it's gonna be difficult for you to see, but what you'll see there is a hard anodized type three aluminum cap. Now the reason why we went with aluminum is because this is non-conductive. If you were to have your coils in here and it touch this, it's not gonna do anything. It may mess with the resistance a little bit, but it will not cause a hard short due to this being hard anodized. These two airflows don't go directly on the coil. They actually go around, then it comes out right there. So airflow is here, right? Comes in through here on the top and then goes to here. This is where the whole leak proof design happens with this unicorn style airflow. As it does come in, it should be cooling the top cap as the airflow is gonna go around and then hit the side of the coil. The way that these nips are, are designed for vertical coils. You could use horizontals in this, however, it is primarily designed for verticals. Now, one thing I wanna show you is you'll notice that there is a lip here. Now what that lip does, and the reason why the air flows like this is because when you tilt it to the side, I don't know why anybody would do this on a dripper. You know, I, I, my argument was I wanted to make sure this thing was fucking leak proof. Like it did not leak no matter what you did. 
And this is what we came up with. So in order for this to leak, you're gonna have to fill it up with juice. And I don't even know why you're gonna fill this up with juice or put more than one mil in it. It's a dripper, it's not an RTA. You fill it up, you tilt it on the side, it's still not gonna leak. Cause the juice has to go to where the airflow is. Even if the juice gets inside of this chamber, it's not really gonna leak. You would have to roll it and then it would start to come out and then roll it again and flip it upside down just because the way that's designed. Now you say, what if the airflow's on the bottom? That's fine, if the airflow's on the bottom, your section up here is where the juice is. So if you have as much juice in here where it's half the top cap, yeah, it's gonna leak, but I don't know why you have that much juice in here. The way that this is designed for dripping technologies is basically leak proof. You can't get this to leak. Now someone may argue and say, well, I put eight mils of juice in there and it leaked. Okay, then I don't know what to tell you. It's not designed for eight mils of juice. This dripper was not gonna have any options for single coil at all. It was just not something that I was really interested in, just the way that the airflow is based. Because even you have to realize, even if you inhale from here, the airflow is gonna go over here and there. It's not designated to each slot as it does go around the whole dripper ensemble. It's not a direct airflow onto the coil corresponding that's perpendicular to the actual airflow port in the chimney. Now I know people are going to argue with this. The only way to line up this airflow in order for me to keep the outside of this looking sexy and retro while keeping a little bit of a baseline of the 454 big block, there was no way to put notches in this. If we put notches in this or put little black tick marks so you knew where the airflow was, it was going to absolutely detract away from the look of this. So how could we have done it? Well, just made it more difficult, I guess. Uh, this is, I know people are going to use this as a fallback, but how many times are you really going to take the top cap? off. If you're squonking, you don't need to take it off. If you're dripping down it, you don't need to take it off. When you're putting this on, you're really going to want to look at the airflow so it's parallel to each other and then just kind of place it. So that is going to require a little bit of a, a, a vision thing, not so much a feel. So if you look here and here where you see the bridges, when you press down, now you have wide open airflow. Now what you'll notice is that tab piece right there is nowhere near the actual one airflow, and then on the other side, the other airflow. So if you wanted to do single coil, what you're gonna do is pick a side. When you're putting the top cap on, you're gonna line this airflow up perpendicular to where the coil is. So if the coil is, let's just say the coil is here and here, right? This is a coil right here in my hand. You're gonna do where the airflow is on the sides of it, not directly in it, because it being on the side of it is gonna line up the airflow down here directly with that coil. Find your single setting. Don't worry about this right now and then just pick a side. I, it doesn't, this is where it doesn't really matter what side you pick. So I'm picking the left side. Now, if you watch, you see how it's kind of cutting it off? There's about one millimeter once the top cap is on of spacing. So you are gonna get a little bit of airflow on the left-hand side. But I had to say to myself, listen, if I don't actually do that and I just leave it wide open, it's not even giving people the option of a somewhat of a single coil. Is the single coil airflow perfect? Absolutely not, it's not. It, again, it was not designed for this. This was something that was kind of added last minute as we really wanted to put that feature in just in case cases someone's like oh you know i want to do single coil well you could and the way you would line this top cap up is the way that that's right now is you just line that up with your one single coil it's not going to matter whether you go to the right or left airflow it's going to pull the airflow from the same section they're both intertwined into one condensing the flavor condensing the vapor production and that is the top cap that is the machining what you see is what you get all finalized in the future you may see this where this will be a different color anodized and there may be a pmma cap so this would be, let's say, blue, and this would be clear. So you would see the blue anodization through the actual clear, maybe ultimate black. There's going to be different configurations down, down the road. Not so much for the dripper, but more for the top cap than the dripper itself. It does resemble the 454 big block, but there is quite a good amount of differences, which we'll go over. Instead of your original clamp that was kind of a ring around its two additional C-clamps versus one as a whole. And the reason why that is, when you unscrew one, clamps may be in the other direction where they're directly in front of the port. I find it to be best if they're actually on the side. So the reason being is because of the juice ports on the top here, the one millimeters. You put your coil in and then this goes kind of on top of it. You can unscrew this more so it's more of a hinge situation, but there is no springs. The reason why these screws are kind of chunky 
and they are Phillips. I prefer Phillips overall. I know some people like Allen keys, some people like flatheads. I prefer Phillips. The reason why we went with these is just because they were more widely known. More people are going to have screwdrivers than they are Allen keys. No, that's not really the reason. I, it's just we went with screws because I love Phillips. I hate everything else. Open this up and then put your build in and then kind of swing this around and then secure it. Someone might argue and say it's a little difficult to get coils in. Keep in mind, guys, this dripper itself is not one of the easiest things to build on. I'm just going to go ahead and tell you that right now. It's not simple like this isn't like bare basic knowledge of a dripper how to put a build in so you have two ports on the top here and you have two ports perpendicular to that lots of perpendicular action going on here so you got it here and you got it down here on both sides now when you squonk what's going to happen is you're going to get a little bit of a multiple action you're going to have juice coming through here on the bottom and you're gonna have juice coming through here on these one millimeter ports. When you push the bottle in, it's gonna open up the valve and the bearings inside, push them aside, let juice go through the top here and through the bottom. When you let go of that squonk, that back pressure is gonna close the valve so it doesn't pull air from the top anymore and it pulls the juice from the bottom. So when you're doing a build on this, try not to have too much cotton over these ports even if you were just to have a very little bit where you see this insulator this hex style insulator down here on the bottom that's even enough just to pull the juice now you can plug that and say you know what i don't want it to pull juice you're just going to put cotton over that i don't know why you would do that the idea behind it is to put enough of juice all over the top of your coils being vertical and all or even horizontal vertical is going to work more i'll show you how to wick this properly so when you put the cotton up here it's literally right there which is one of the reasons why i don't prefer to build the coil like this because now that is really nowhere near the coil it's kind of on the opposite side of it it will roll off the way that i set this up the way that i'd use this as a squonker it works perfect the reason why you see these little bit of scratches here a little bit of scratches here uh, essentially this top piece was formed just like this on the bottom and we had to sand it down so it had this kind of piston look on it now the hex bolt down here on the bottom is obviously very unique you really don't see that now this is the whole thing the center of this this post is very very fat and thick it's because of the stuff that's inside of this 510 I'm telling you guys right now do not dismantle this you will break this i don't know why you would dismantle this to begin with just because you wouldn't dismantle any other post that came with a dripper you would just kind of take it out and replace it put a squonk pin in with this you don't need to do it it's set it and forget it i'm telling you now do not open this to find out how it works inside it just works i know someone's gonna say here's what's inside ports on the actual post is two millimeters by three and a half i believe it may be 3.2 close enough so it's a really really big port you can twist 22 gauge and run two coils in here now you can run this with four coils you'll notice the whole post configuration is a lot more different than the 454 if you wanted to run four coils you would have to do one here and then kind of push one to the other side there's not a designated post for the actual side as this is really going to design for dual posts with your cotton all over here if you look at the top, that is in fact an Allen screw. Now you can take that out, and once you take that out, obviously that's how you put your coils in. If you don't want to use that, you can use the screw that it came with. Using the screw that it came with is going to provide a little bit of a double action. Using this screw is going to block off these two ports. Yeah, it's not going to go totally down because your coils are going to be in here. However, when you drip down it, if you're not using it as a squonker, you don't have to worry about juice getting in here. I don't even bother using this screw, but if you really wanted to, you could, or you can use that. That. If you don't want to use it as a squonker and you want to use it as a dripper, you can leave it the way that it is. The only thing you really have to change on this is the actual squonk pin, which we'll go over right now. On the bottom of here, you're going to see 502, the Raven's Moon logo, Jay Hayes right there. Your serial is going to be right here. P1 does not mean prototype one. It's basically reviewer one. If you want to remove this and make this a non-squonker, you're going to remove that little itty bitty Allen key all the way deep inside there take your little itty bitty allen key that it came with and remove the screw from inside this does not come with an extra screw and this screw is really really small i know that sucks i know people use the argument well that sucks because what if i lost it well 
I'm not quite sure how to answer that right now. I'm here to tell you that that port inside is really large and there was really no other way to do it. If we did it where we removed the pin, you're gonna remove all the stuff inside of the 510. Now those scratches and everything you see there are all from me. That is not the way you're gonna get this. This has been through some very, very rigorous testing. Keep in mind when you see other people do reviews or them showing you the dripper, it's not gonna look like this. It's gonna look a lot better than what this is. Put this screw somewhere safe, guys, seriously put it somewhere safe. So when you do take these clamps off, keep in mind they're a little bit of a pain in the ass to get back in. It's not going to be something simple like, oh, let me just put this screw in and rock it. You may need some tweezers or some really tiny fingers, you know, call your lady and tell her you need to use her fingers. Maybe grab, um... Pinocchio. I don't know why you would need Pinocchio. Just keep in mind those little fine scratches you see on there are not going to be on the final rendition. And then there is your really fat O-ring and then another O-ring here. So you have a double pressure option, one to secure it and then one to make sure it does not leak. And then there you can see the machining. Also, the C-clamps are going to be more of a polished versus a brush look. These are the prototype clamps because we were going to go with the ring, but we went with the C-clamps. Chicken noodle soup with a cherry on the side. That sounds absolutely fucking disgusting. Now, I know a lot of people don't like verticals or they just don't understand them. The glory of a vertical coil versus a horizontal, of course, they're going to both give you the same amount of vape. Everything's going to be exactly the same. The only difference is because there's a bit of a mushroom cloud or a mushroom cotton cloud on the top, it's going to alleviate all spit back. However, even the way that this is designed, if it is a horizontal, you're not going to get much spit back because of the anodized top caps. So just go ahead and snip, go ahead and close your eyes, shut them down. Good job. Whatever you were using to build it, kind of keep that in there. And the reason being is we're going to need that to keep that coil straight as you tighten this down. Don't worry about how messy it is right now. Okay, just like that, right there, just like that, and kind of put it in. Just like how you saw me do it. Coils locked in. Now, basically, if you would have went the other way, it would have been a little bit easier to do this. But like I said, I do it this way so the port holes are literally right by the cotton. Pull this as tight as possible. The way that I'm doing this, this may cause the coil to be by the Phillips. And the reason why I do that, well, I'll show you in a second. Before I tighten that down all the way, I'll put my screwdriver back in or the jig, whatever you used. You'll notice that there is a little bit of play up here. See, I got like a loop around going on. You don't necessarily have to do this loop. I just kind of do that as like a little trick. You'll notice I got the looper run again over here. I don't know if that's a Pisces sign, but a flathead underneath just to kind of bring it up a little bit. Pull the wick through, you grab the bottom here, pull it out, pull it, and good to go. Now there's another way to do this where I'm gonna show you it being perfectly straight and how the clamps come when you get it. The coils that I just showed you was actually dual 24 core with 38 on the outside. This is a dual 28 with 38 on the outside. You're gonna have a harder time getting crazy coils in here than you would with simple coils like what I have, even though what I have right now is not really a simple coil per se. So what I'll do now is I got this here. I'm just going to hold it, give it a good pull. Now you see how much extra slack I got. Hold your jig or whatever you got in place and then give it a good pull. And you'll notice that those coils, every time you do this, the coils basically become almost perfectly straight. And you see I left the screw in on that one and I kind of just like swing it around, swing it up and then it's it's in. If you wanted to bring this at an angle to make it easier to wick, you can go ahead and just turn it at this point, but I'm going to leave mine the way that it is. Those are really small coils for the actual application. You can make them much bigger. You have plenty of room. You have plenty of room in the space. It's really dictated as to how you want to build this. So I built this really high resistance because I'm going to be using this on a DNA 60 and I want to make sure that I don't need a lot of power to fire it. Just because as a squonker, you know, there's not much options out there for dual battery squonker so we're going to be using a single battery 2700 thug dna 60. my coils in here are really really small but i'm again i'm doing this really because squonkers there's not many options for you know dual battery squonkers and i don't want to you know destroy a single battery you can do this where it's at an angle you just basically put your whatever jig you were using and just turn it so it's a little bit easier to wick for me it's not that big of a deal i kind of have my little jammies already made those of you that are going to ask what kind of uh, cotton i'm using here where i'm rolling my jays uh-oh you rolling them jays bring this down as much as i can by hand you see it right there so what i do is i just kind of pull it up like that now depending on the cotton you use is going to dictate how you're going to do this because some cottons you don't need to twist, they're just kind of fluffy. 
and just naturally work. Cotton I use is uh, a little jumpy at best. I don't know how cotton could be jumpy. As I tug this, not hard, I just kind of push down with the screwdriver. Now that the coils are there, the ports are literally directly underneath it, so you don't have to worry about really having too much cotton in there and just separating it, so to speak, like how I'm doing here. Now, the top part right here, watch how I do this. I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna cut this like a little cloud. A little bit extra, and then all I'm gonna do at this point is kind of feather it and fluff it, just like that around it. You don't have to do this this way. You could not even put a cotton cloud on the top, make it a straight shot. Either way, it's still going to wick. Whether or not it's going to wick as good as what I'm doing right now is a different story entirely. So you could also do it like how I just grabbed it right there. The trick is though to spin this enough to where it's kind of loose in there. This is why people hate verticals. Is they find it very, very difficult to wick. But do you see, because mine's loose, it just... It just works. And I'm not even pulling on it. I'm just putting my screwdriver in and give it a little bit of a tug. I know naturally you wanna fill the well up with stuff. I know I do. I really prefer not to, especially on this specific dripper, because it doesn't really matter if you do or you don't. Take my Juicy Jams. We're just gonna put a little bit on here. I'm just doing this so we can do the form factor of the top, basically like um, treating the center post as you would a coil. So we have a coil here, coil there. You're just going to take these airflows, don't line them up with the coil, the top airflow. You're just going to make it just like that. When you do that, you see the slit right here? See a little airflow port right on the coils. And there you go. If you watch and listen, you'll hear the situation. And the squonk, full squonk, all the way in. You see how that worked? So the squonking's coming through the top. And that's all the way in, by the way. And then we let it go. And that is fully saturated. For the top cap, because there is no notches or any nicks in this, I'm just basically gonna kinda eye it. See, that's where that's at. Air flows there. Make sure it's parallel to each other. Eye it. That's it. So you're gonna have to kinda take my word for it. No jump cuts. Let's go ahead and squawk all the way in. You can see all the juice coming through. Let it go. Bottle is good. Oh, there it goes. Watch. Just going to tilt this on its side. Now, I don't know why you would tilt this on the side like this with all this juice in here. But if you were so inclined, you could. Uh, again, I there's a lot of juice in there right now. But I guess... It kind of makes it in a sense where I really wanted to do something that wasn't going to leak. Um, we all do, yeah, there's a lot of juice in there. You can see it all. It's it just, we're going to just put a little bit more in here. We're going to kind of overfill it as much as I don't know why we would do this. Let's go ahead and do it again. No jump cuts. We're just going to line the airflow up. All right. And then we're going to tilt it on its side. Again, no juice. You would see juice coming down right here. Clearly, there's none. There's a lot of juice in there, but I think it's at the point now where the juice is actually past the coils. It the, Obviously, I didn't want to make it like it was like ridiculous, like kind of inviting you to fill it up, but you could put a lot of juice in there. Now, once you go past about half of the coils and you tilt it to the side, it may leak. That's because the juice... You know, there's a halfway cutoff. You know, you have your airflow one way and your juice flow the other way. No matter how you tilt this, it's not going to leak. Of course, if you put so much in here where it's going to leak through the actual drip tip, then I don't know what to tell you. Dual jammies, right there. Now, if you look, there is plenty of room for air to get past that cotton. If you're finding that that's too much of an obstruction, just go ahead and move it out of the way. It doesn't necessarily have to be there. That's just a little trick I like to do. Lots of anti-spit back just because you have that cotton sitting on the top, just like that. And now that we're using this, I must use the uh, the matching uh, drip tip jammy. Let's bring it on top and go over to 502 RDA by myself and Raven's Moon. 502 RDA sitting on top of the Thug PNA 60. Absolutely gorgeous. Matching drip tip and buttons. Of course, this is Box Mod Mafia. Go ahead and provide a link to that guy. 
right there. Point for 149.5, we're actually gonna put a little bit more power through it. 54 watts, here we go. Man. Okay, I can't hit this anymore. I can't do it. I can't. I'm getting way too fucking loopy. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, my God. You ever cough so much or, like, sneeze and you get blood pressure in your head? Gotta turn the fan on because it's entirely too fucking vapey. You ever, you know what I'm talking about? Like, if you did, like, a handstand and how your head would feel? That's what I just felt. Anyway, um, yeah, so what do we got? All right, let's just go over this. I know a lot of people are gonna bring this up as far as the build, the build, the build, the build. It's not difficult, but if you're gonna be using something like a stagger tin or really ridiculously thick builds, it's not gonna work in here. You may get one coil in, but even then you could still clamp it down. I just don't know how well this is gonna vape with the design of a coil like that, like something really exotic. This is really gonna shine with simple builds, Clapton's, Fuse Clapton's, twisted, twisted braided, vertebrates. It's gonna shine with any of those. It's just those really, really chunky ones that people don't really vape on anyway, but you could put them in here. I don't know if you're gonna fit two. As far as it being horizontal, look, it's possible to do horizontals. The same way you saw me do a vertical, all you do is you just take your screwdriver, keep it a little bit loose. Once both screws are in each C-clamp and kind of turn it, and now you have a horizontal coil, you could do it at an angle. Granted, you're not gonna get the exact same airflow with the horizontal than you will a vertical, especially since the verticals are literally, the whole coil is right next to the airflow. Someone might argue and say that there's not enough airflow on here at its tightest section. Oh shit. It's a very tight lung hit. I would say it's a really, really restrictive lung hit. It's not it's not a mouth to lung. You would have a little bit of a hard time getting a mouth to lung out of this. I much prefer it, honestly, both ports wide open. You know that clicking, super sexy. Originally, before we actually did the launch of this, we had it where the airflow was essentially just the same way the top cap is, is the same way the prototype was, but there was no tab. So even though you only have one top, open all that's doing is just splitting that airflow between the two so it wasn't really a single coil versus this is blocking off the opposing airflow of the other side of where the coil would be if it was dual i know people are going to complain that the top cap gets hot now if you're running this at 80 90 watts and you're running really big juicy coils due to the thickness of the stainless steel it's going to get hot the fins on the top of the top cap are going to help dissipate the heat but i can't promise you that this is not not gonna get hot I, I just can't if you're gonna sit here and not provide any airflow and just hold it down of course it's gonna get hot at that point you're not putting any air to circulate through it the way that it's designed where the air goes throughout the whole chimney is going to make it cooler a lot quicker than if it was just ports on the side but I didn't want to make ports on the side because everybody else has ports on the side I wanted this to be top side airflow, which was difficult, especially keeping the dimensions of this. I forgot to mention that. Bottom of the deck to the top is 24 and a half without a drip tip. So it's a 25 by 25. So you're gonna get a lot of flavor out of this because the throw is extremely, extremely short. Now I know some people are gonna use the argument that the dripper's too much money. Listen, I apologize, I do. I, I really, really do that the price point is a little bit higher. There is no way for this to be any cheaper than what it is. Due to the cost of how much it costs to make this, and then the packaging, which is not available yet, everything being American made, it really, really puts a hindrance on how low can you go. I do plan on releasing something, whether it's a tank or a dripper, that's gonna be a lot more affordable to people. I, I haven't gone that route yet, but it is something that I am looking into, because I know people want something with my name on it that's gonna be more readily available. Something like a tank made from China. I, as much as I wanna make an American tank, I just know how much that's gonna be. It's amazing seeing something that I wanted to create, that I wanted to make that was different 
and seeing it in front of me and using it and it working well. It being an American product is something that I drove to. There was no other options. I could have went to China, sure. Could have outsourced this, sure. I didn't want to do that. Even though it's wet, I'm still going to do this. About half a bottle. That's a little bit more than half, but squonk. Wait. Tilt it to its side. I don't know why you would do this. I really don't, but do it again. Push it all the way in. You see how much juice is now in there? Probably two and a half mils. Take this, tilt it to its side. Oh yeah, now it's soaking wet. There's multiple ways of getting this. Number one is to have a Facebook account and be on the group Wicks and Coils. I'll provide a link down below as to how you get into that group. And it's going to be released in batches of 250, five batches in total. And it's going to be like quick strike. As soon as that list comes out, it's not a randomizer. It's whoever responds and pays for it. And then we move forward. That's number one. Number two. Is to be part of my Patreon. Again, I'll provide a link down below. That kind of guarantees you a spot. And then that's really it. This is how I'm getting anything is you donating to me. I think it's the $3 block that designates you a spot. But there's only like 45 spots of three. And then there's like 55 spots of five. What is going to assign you a spot, a guaranteed spot, is the Patreon. So you have Wix and Calls. Patreon. Third option would be on vapelife.com. That's going to be limited as well. As soon as these come out, they're going to be gone. It's just like any other high end. And the fact that my name is on it, people are going to want to get this and they're going to want to rip it apart. Say that the airflow is too tight. They might say that the single coil doesn't work, which I've gone over both of those. You may say the top cap gets too hot. I'm not having that problem at all. Like, I could put this on my eye socket. I don't know why you would do this, but again, it, it will get, that's not fun, because now I got nicotine in my eyeball. I'm not saying that this won't get hot. If you have really low bills in this, 0.2 or below, and you're ramping this bitch up and firing it, yeah, yeah, that nicotine is burning like a mother, mm, shit, woo, it's like a I feel like someone put one of them Pacquiao chips. That's probably not how you say it. The little pepper chips. The one chip challenge. Pacows in my eye socket or like a chili pepper. Don't do that. Don't quote me on this. At the very end, if they sell that fast and they go that fast, there may be a cheaper rendition where it's not going to come with the stainless steel cap. They are going to be serialized and there is a certain block of numbers that are already designated to people because they were in the 50 block of Patreon. That's not saying you have to do that. That's not saying you even have to donate anything. You could just hit notify when available on the Vape Life website and and as soon as they're up, you get it. I can't promise you that because that list is it's pretty damn high. So if I was to rate this dripper on a zero to 10, yeah, how could you rate your own shit, Jay? Because I can, because I can, you know? It, that's why, that's yeah, fine. Ferrari rates their own cars. That's how they make it. They say, okay, this is nice. Let's make it. So I'm saying this is nice. Let's make it. Zero to 10, how would I rate this? In an 8.59, nine. See, I'm not going 9.5 or 10. There's other drippers I rated that high. Look, I'm not gonna bullshit you. I have to go 8.59 just because this functions that good. What would I change on it? If the airflow actually locked in place and you could see the airflow, I know that's a huge negative. But listen, once you set it, forget it, it's good to go. It's just like you would have to take top cap off and line up your coils every time. This, you don't have to line it up. You just kind of do perpendicular to where the coils are, put top cap on, and yeah, you do got to finger fuck this to get this to work. And then number two. Um... Uh, some springs in the clamp. I'm just trying to come up with shit. The springs in the clamp would be nice, but then again, you could just go buy a pen for four cents. Those springy jammies, cut that spring and put it in there, and I got a spring clamp. 
Not saying to do that because if you do that, what's going to happen is that screw is not going to touch that top cap and that side post. You don't want to do that. You don't want to do that. There's not many things I could really say are wrong with this. The squonking is fantastic. I really have to push, guys. Do not take that 510 apart. Please do not take it apart. Do anything else but take it apart. If you lose something from that center post and you're like, Jay, help me out. No, I'm not going to help you out because I told you not to open the shit. You might as well kick me in the balls and ask me to make you chicken soup with some boneless spare ribs. Do I look like your bitch? No, I don't. Maybe I do. And if I do, hey, what's up, man? What's going on? You coming over tonight? Making some soups? You gonna make soups? 8.5 is where I would go. Probably a 9. There's not many things I could say that's negative with this. Oh, and it does get hot. It's whatever. Keep in mind, though, the side chamber will get hotter than the top cap will as well because your airflow is going through the top cap where those fins are to keep it cool, and it's going to go around the whole dripper. So it's going to maintain kind of a steady heat problem, I guess. It could be a problem. Depending on your build. Just don't do silly shit. Don't put fucking Staggertons in here. Do 318 watts. Be like, Jay, I burnt off my right nostril. Well, then get a scalpel and recut it open. I don't know. You know, figure it out. It's not my job to tell you how to vape. It is my job to provide something well thought out with my name on it. And I welcome all the negative reviews I'm going to get because... Any person I've done a negative review for, I feel like they're going to look at this and be like, oh, let me just rip this apart. I just hope everybody's unbiased when they do that review and they truly give their thoughts on it and what could have been improved and changed. Keep in mind that everything in here, even the post, everything is from the ground up. Yeah, the 454 Big Block, that is its little brother, sister thing. 454 Big Block is the size of an engine. 502 is the next step up. And there's other engine sizes, but we're not going to get into that. We're not here for mechanics class. We're here for the dripper. So the question is, is whether or not I've kept it real. Not have you, Jay Hazel.